just like architects provide windows and door shadows. Structural engineers also provide bar bending shadows along with their structural drawings. Hi guys, this is Chevjin Academy. On this channel, we talk about structural design and every other things relating to it. In this video, we are going to be discussing about how to produce a professional looking bar bending schedule using the engineer's approach. Bar bending schedule is a document that is used to represent the quantities and the cutting length of reinforcement according to the construction plan. Let us look at some of the major reasons why it is necessary to prepare a bar bending schedule along with your drawings. One of it is it makes construction easy. Preparation of bar bending schedule, iron benders can easily cut the required length and shape of reinforcement without even looking at the structural drawings. Another reason is it saves with preparation of bar bending schedule at a glance, you can determine the amount of reinforcement required for a particular project. Then to buttress the last point, bar bending schedule also make it easier for clients and contractors to produce bill of quantities that is required for the project. Different companies have different ways of preparing bar bending schedules. Bar bending schedule can be prepared from Excel template. We also have softwares that auto generate bar bending schedule based on your structural design and detail outputs. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you a generic way in which you can easily prepare your bar bending schedule manually so that you understand how to do it and then you can replicate this for your project so bar bending schedule can come in different forms just like the table you are looking at on your screen you can see that we have different forms or different columns in a bar bending schedule table this is one this is another one the main purpose of it is to summarize the detailing of reinforcement so the main components in which you must have in a bar bending schedule include the bar marks, the type and size of reinforcement, the numbers of reinforcement, the length, and then the shape. So these are the major components that, that are necessary in a bar bending schedule. For the first example, you can see we have member size. This is an addition. We have bar marks, types and size, numbers of members numbers of bars in each total number length of each bar shape code and also we have uh, some reference letters like a b c d so the shape code is actually used to code the shape of bars different bars have different shape code you can refer to bs 8666 for standard shapes so we have shape 01 which is a straight bar we have shape 11 that has this l shape then each shape of reinforcement can be determined by their shape code but to make it easier most of the time engineers use a simpler form of ways of creating bar bendy schedule for example this table shows another form of a bar bendy schedule table so in this table we have bar marks we have size, the quantities of reinforcement, the length, the total length, and then the forms. These forms represent the shape and also the length of each shape in the schedule. So before we continue in this video, if you like what I'm showing you, you can subscribe to this channel, like this video, and also share it to your professional colleague so that they can learn from it. In order to understand the process of preparation of bar bending schedule so let us to look at how the bar bending schedule for this slab floor slab is being generated so we are going to be using this simple format of bar bending schedule that include columns such as the bar mark the size the quantities the length the total length and then the forms these forms represent the bar shapes and then the length of each side of the ship. A slab reinforcement detail and each of the reinforcements are detailed from 
by Mark 1 to by Mark 19. So you can see that the bar body schedule also contain bar mark from 1 to 18. So the first reinforcement here is the one with bar mark 1. So bar body schedule should be done serially for easier uh, interpretation and easy for clarity on site. So the first reinforcement is bar mark 1. So this is the uh the name of the reinforcement or let's say the the x the identity so you can trace this reinforcement to know which you can trace this line to know which reinforcement is this identity for so if you come here you can see that it is for this uh reinforcement so usually we use this donut at the intersection of the line that is the line that shows the detail of the reinforcement and the reinforcement so this is the donut so you can see that this reinforcement has uh, a straight line and then it is returned back into the concrete section so but before we now go to the shape of the reinforcement let us look at the meaning of this reinforcement identity the first element is 12 i've actually explained this in one of my video on reading slab reinforcement detail you can check out the video in the link at the top right corner of this video or you check the description in order to watch that this 12 is the number y is the type of reinforcement 12 is the size of the reinforcement 01 is the bar mark the spacing is 200 the position is bottom top you can see that on the bar body schedule we do not provide a column for bar type because this project we've already know that we, we are going to be using a single type of reinforcement, which is IE. So that's why we don't provide a column for it. But in case where the type of reinforcement you want to use differs based on different elements of the project, then you can include that. So the first element, which is Bamak 1, this is the reinforcement. So what you have to do is to record the size. So the size of the reinforcement is 12 based on this, uh, based on this nomenclature is 12 so that is why the on the quantity here, on the size here you have 12 the quantity is 12 as well because the first element here is 12 then now going to the length in order to determine the length we need to know the forms so these forms show the shape of the reinforcement most of the time it is not to scale so we do not create it to scale so it's just like just a representation so the first element which is the straight path you can see that from here is five three six five all you just have to do is to measure how do they got it they measure the longest side from here to where it ends here you can see it's five three six five so that is how they got this first dimension then the second dimension you measure from here so most of the time the curved can be ignored because they make they are very little in dimension this is 100 and then the last part from here to here is 600 so that is how to determine the shape which in this case is referred to as the form so once you get the form you now have to get the total length of reinforcement the total length of reinforcement is a uh, Addition of all these sides together 5365 plus 600 plus 100. So that is going to give you 6065. These dimensions are in millimeters because this drawing is said to be in millimeters. So, but we convert it to meters. The reason is because the unit weight of reinforcement is already computed in kilogram per meter so that is why the length is converted to meters but for you to get this total this total is gotten by multiplying the quantities you know we say we have 12 number of this reinforcement the quantity which is 12 multiply it by the length 12 multiplied by 6065 so this is the result in millimeters so you divide by 1000 to get it in meters so dividing by 1000 is going to give 72.78 7 
So that is how you arrive at 72.78 under this total. So you move to the next reinforcement, which is bar mark 2, which is this reinforcement. You can see that the size of this reinforcement is 10 mm instead of 12. So that is why you have 10 here. Then the quantity is 4. That is why you have 4 here. Then you can see that this bar mark, this reinforcement is representing this, uh, this call out is representing this reinforcement because it do not falls on it. So it's just a straight bar. So that is why on the bar bending schedule is just a straight bar here. So the length of the straight bar is 1300, which is equivalent to 1300 millimeters. So because it is just a straight bar, so there's nothing to add. So that is why the total length is the same here. Then you can now find the total, that is the total, the length multiplied by the quantity. So if you do that, divide by 1000, you get 5.2 meters so that is how you do for each reinforcement so you do the same for all reinforcement from bar mark 3 up to bar mark 18 which is the last one so let's use this bar mark 18 as the last example bar mark 18 is for this reinforcement this reinforcement that has something like a uh, this shape so if you look at it you can see here is 2080, here is 100, here is 100, here is 711, 710, 710. So addition of all of this is going to give 5165. But there is something that you have to note. This is in the aspect of slab detailing. You can watch my video on slab detailing as well. If you check the description, I'm going to leave the video in the description of this video. If you want to learn how to detail a slab just like the way we have it here you should know that the total length of reinforcement for each bar should not exceed 12 meters so you can see that all the reinforcements here the length here this is the counting length of reinforcement so if iron benders want to cut for bar mark 18 for example this is what they are going to cut they are going to cut a a reinforcement of 5165 millimeters that is equivalent to 5 meters 165 millimeters so and then this length will now be bent into all this to now form this shape so do, that is how the iron benders is going to carry out the exercise so this is what the iron bender needs this length column and also the forms so once they cut out this length from the standard 12 meters length of reinforcement then they cannot bend it into this form i hope we get so that is how to prepare to calculate the total length of reinforcement now how do we now get the total quantity of reinforcement because reinforcement are sold in markets you can either buy them in length or you buy them in tonnage most of the time in tonnage so that is why it's always better to calculate the tonnage of reinforcement so in order to do that for this slab detailing we only have two sizes of reinforcement we have 10 mm and 12 mm so then you now have the summarized total length and the total weight of reinforcement on the uh top part of this bar schedule so to calculate the unit weight of each reinforcement it is given by the formula d square divided by 162 d in the formula represent the size or the diameter of reinforcement so for example for 10 mm is going to be d square divided by 162 to approximately 0.6617 so the same thing you can calculate for 12 mm so that is going to be 12 square divided by 162 so this is going to give you 0 0.889 in kilogram per meters then since we know the how do you now calculate the total length of 10 mm reinforcement all you just have to do is add up all reinforcement that has a diameter of 10 mm which is adding up 5.2 plus 6.9 3.9 which is this then adding up it adding it up with 14.25 with 40.2 and then uh 37.3 and lastly 38.41 
so if you add up all this total length of y10 you are going to end up with 147.15 so this is the total length for y10 you do the same thing for y12 so that is going to give you 1018.77 meters so how do you now get the weight we already have the unit weight which is in kilogram per meter so you just multiply the unit weight by the length the total length that we uh we calculated so that is going to give you 0 0.617 for 10 mm multiplied by 147.15 so approximately you are going to be having 19.8 kilogram y10 reinforcement needed for the detailing or for the construction of this slab then for y12 you are going to be having 0 0.889 multiplied by 1018.77 so at the end of the day you are going to be having 905.69 which is close to one ton because one ton is is equivalent to about uh, 1000 kilogram then you can have the total length of your y10 and y12 even though this parameter is not important because what you need is the weight of y10 and weight of y12 to determine the weight in which you are going to get in the market i'm sure with this video you now understand how to simply generate a bar bending schedule and also how to calculate the total quantity of reinforcement needed for your project if you have any question on this you can leave them in the comment section i will try and respond to your question if you also want to learn more about structural design you can check out our website chevdinacademy.com on that site you let you see a lot of courses in which you can get to in order to improve yourself as a professional structural engineer thank you see you in the next video